and believing in ministers who are leading their souls to hell. Jesus explained in the scriptures that those ministers are not going to heaven and they're blocking you from going. It's like the blind leading the blind because the people love their pastors and their churches more than Jesus. Just because a pastor is behind the pulpit doesn't mean that he's preaching from the word of God because they will pervert the word of the living God for their own purpose. That's why the Bible says to try the spirits by the spirits where they be of God because there are many false prophets who are gone into the world. Don't listen to preachers, I mean false prophets, who are motivators of prosperity, of self-empowerment, of health and wealth, and teachers of life skills because they say that they're giving you the principles to live by to improve your life. Like most popular preachers and TV ministers on TVN, like Joe Osteen, T.D. Jakes, and Rick Warren. Many ministers are following their teachings instead of the teachings of Jesus Christ because they want to have large churches and large amounts of money at the price of your soul. People need to wake up and realize that their teachings are doctrines of demons to contradict the Bible with half lies and half truths 
so Satan can get your soul. Their teachings come from the rudiments and wisdom of this world, which is foolishness with God, and is based on the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life. God says, this is not of me, but of this world. And the Bible says that those type of ministers are of the world. Therefore, they speak of the world, and the world hears them. The world listens to them, the world believes them, and the world will follow them straight down to hell fire. God says, I have not sent these prophets, yet they ran. I have not spoken to them, yet they prophesied. But if they had stood in my counsel and had caused my people to hear my word, then they should have turned them from their evil way and from the evil of their doings. And they will cry aloud and spare not. Lift up that voice like a trumpet and show my people their transgressions and their sins. Ministers are supposed to warn the sinners to save their souls from hell and warn the righteous not to sin so they won't end up in hell. If they don't, God is going to require their blood at their hands. Preachers of the day are afraid to warn their congregation about their sin and talk about hell because they're afraid that the members, the mothers of the church, the deacon board, the board members, and their money might leave. If a minister is not afraid of the gospel of Jesus Christ, he would preach what Jesus preached consistently, not once a year, because God says to teach my word faithfully. They would preach it in season and out of season. They would preach the truth when they want to hear it and when they don't want to hear it until Jesus comes back. The Wolf in Sheep's Clothing A wolf found it very difficult in getting to the sheep because of the vigilance of the shepherd and his dogs. But one day it found the skin of a sheep that had been flayed and thrown aside. And so it put the sheepskin on over its own pelt and walked down among the sheep. A lamb began to follow the wolf in sheep's clothing around. And so the wolf led the lamb away from the others and made a meal of her. For many days he was successful in tricking the sheep, and he had many hearty meals. Appearances can be deceptive. False teachers will tell you what you want to hear. Beware of people who do this because all they want to do is to gain the glory of men. Satan plants these demonic minions so that it can have your soul. Ezekiel 33, 3, 1 KJV, and they come unto thee as the people cometh, and they sit before thee as my people, and they hear thy words, but they will not do them, for with their mouth they shew much love, but their heart go after their covetousness. Ezekiel 34 to KJV, son of men, prophecy against the shepherds of Israel, prophecy, and say unto them, Thus say, the Lord God unto the shepherds, will be to the shepherds of Israel that do feed themselves. Should not the shepherds feed the flocks? The first epistle of Paul, the apostle to Timothy, chapter 1. Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ, by the commandment of God our Savior, and Lord Jesus Christ, which is our hope, unto Timothy, my own son in the faith, grace, mercy, and peace from God our Father, and Jesus Christ our Lord. As I besought thee to abide still at Ephesus, when I went into Macedonia, that thou mightest charge some that they teach no other doctrine, neither give heed to fables and endless genealogies, which minister questions rather than godly edifying which is in faith, so do. Now the end of the commandment is charity out of a pure heart, and of a good conscience, and of faith unfeigned, from which some having swerved have turned aside unto vain jangling, desiring to be teachers of the law, understanding neither what they say nor whereof they affirm. But we know that the law is good if a man use it lawfully, Knowing this, 
that the law is not made for a righteous man, but for the lawless and disobedient, for the ungodly and for sinners, for unholy and profane, for murderers of fathers and murderers of mothers, for manslayers, for whoremongers, for them that defile themselves with mankind, for men-stealers, for liars, for perjured persons, and if there be any other thing that is contrary to sound doctrine, according to the glorious gospel of the blessed God, which was committed to my trust. And I thank Christ Jesus our Lord, who hath enabled me, for that he counted me faithful, putting me into the ministry, who was before a blasphemer, and a persecutor, and injurious. But I obtained mercy, because I did it ignorantly in unbelief. And the grace of our Lord was exceeding abundant with faith, and love which is in Christ Jesus. This is a faithful saying, and worthy of all acceptation, that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners, of whom I am chief. Howbeit for this cause I obtain mercy, that in me first Jesus Christ might shew forth all long-suffering, for a pattern to them which should hereafter believe on him to life everlasting. Now unto the King eternal, immortal, invisible, the only wise God, be honor and glory for ever and ever. Amen. This charge I commit unto thee, son Timothy, according to the prophecies which went before on thee, that thou by them mightest war a good warfare, holding faith, and a good conscience, which some, having put away concerning faith, have made shipwreck, of whom is Hymenaeus and Alexander, whom I have delivered unto Satan, that they may learn not to blaspheme. Hello, everybody. Today is September 5th, 2016. And I've gotten a, a couple of requests to clarify the methods that I use, which I would uh, definitely um, say to you that they are biblical. Now, as you know, Cat T came out recently and falsely prophesied the rapture. And I've made a couple of videos where I definitely had some interesting things to say about her. Not necessarily always nice. Um... So in any case, I want to address that. What you're looking at is Matthew chapter 18, specifically verse 15. And it says, Moreover, if thy brother shall trespass against thee, go and tell him his fault between thee and him alone. This has nothing to do with what I did with Cat T. Cat T did not commit a trespass against me. Cat T and many others like her teach false doctrine. This verse does not apply to them. This is an entirely different subject. This has to do with your brother uh, trespassing against you. So now that we've got that straight, let me show you what it is that I do. If you come over to Romans chapter 16, we're going to start in uh, 17. Now I beseech you, brethren, mark them which cause divisions and offenses contrary to the doctrine which ye have learned, and avoid them. Now right here, if you look, cause divisions, whoops, would uh, prophesying a false rapture fall under the category of causing division? But the way that I see it is, this woman called Jesus Christ a liar. And as a result, I could categorize that as an offense. And it is contrary to the doctrine of Jesus Christ, for which if you've read your Bible, then surely you have learned this. I had somebody come to me and try to mock me doing the very thing that they were condemning me for, which I find laughable. But I don't condemn him for that. For if he thought that I was teaching a false doctrine, he certainly has that right. So I had to school him because he was obviously a novice who had no clue what he's talking about. Because he's been taught by the false teachers these days that Jesus is just, just love. Now again I say, there is no greater love than that of Jesus Christ. But you cannot have the love of Jesus Christ without abiding in his absolute truth. For we've discussed this many times. Jehovah's Witnesses say they love Jesus. Mormons say they love Jesus. Even Catholics say that they love Jesus. 
but one of them believes that Jesus turned into Jesus and he was once Michael the Archangel. Is that truth? And the answer is no. Another one believes that they can become gods when they die. Is that true? No, that's not true. And the other one worships Mary and prays to dead people. Is that true? No, it's not true. So you know that there's so many different doctrines out there, but yet there's only one truth. And the only way to find this truth is to read your Bible. So I want to show you the differences here, and I want to show you two more verses. This is an oldie but a goodie, a classic. And make no mistake, this is a commandment. Ephesians 5.11 And have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather reprove them. And you can read on. It talks a little bit more about this. Right here I'd like to point out where it says, Awake thou that sleepest. For there are many right now that are asleep that don't know their scripture. Write this one down. This is Psalms chapter 94, verse 16. Who will rise up for me against the evildoers? Or who will stand up for me against the workers of iniquity? That should really sink into those who think that we should just simply pray and leave everything to God. Don't speak. Just pray. Don't do anything. Somebody might judge you, or you might be perceived as judging them. You know what, people? Who's going to stand up for God? While there's 30,000 YouTube channels who are teaching ridiculous doctrines. And finally, I'm going to leave you with this. And this is from an article that I was reading, but I... I like the commentary below, but Ezekiel 3, 18, 19. If I say to the wicked, you shall surely die, and you give him no warning, nor speak to warn the wicked from his wicked way in order to save his life, that wicked person shall die in, for his iniquity, but his blood I will re require at your hand. But if you warn the wicked, and he does not turn from his wickedness or from his wicked way, he shall die for his iniquity but you will have delivered your soul. People, it's a sin, and it's wickedness not to warn those, not to expose those who are intentionally teaching a false doctrine. And I'll, I've got to tell you, the alarming part of living in these last days is not just watching wicked teachers rise up and teach insane and blasphemous doctrines. It's watching the people swallowed, their followers get swallowed into a delusion that I personally cannot believe exists in this time and day. I've seen, since this whole cat tea thing, people resist God more than I ever have in my entire life. You quote them scripture, show the error of what this woman has done. And they resist, resist, and resist, even digging in further into their trenches of pride to stand firm to continue to support this false teacher who practices divination, numerology, and the zodiac. It is astonishing. But I like what this author says in this paper he wrote. How can you justify the wicked and stand up for the devil rather than God? How can you call what goes against God's word good? Now, what Cat T did went against God's word. Yet there are those who are staunchly supporting her still. I can't even tell you how grieving this is. God hates this. A false prophet was to be put to death back in the Old Testament days. That's how much God hated it. And finally he says, whose side are you on? Well, we're finding out. But I've done my job as far as Cat T's concerned. I've warned what she did. It was so obvious even before the second or the third or the fourth came. 
it was so obvious and right on target, just as our Bible tells us, she fell flat on her face. Ridiculous. Yet you've still got people coming at me as though I'm the one who is wrong, when I'm the one who's abiding in the truth of Christ and pleading with you in the name of Jesus Christ to please get sober, get vigilant. Whose side are you on? Hi, Saints. Um, quick update. Yesterday <clears throat> evening, I went to my parents' house because my bosses let me have Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday off, so I'll be returning to work Thursday. Thursday, that would be the um, August 4th. Anyway, um, my parents are here. They, what they wanted to do was they didn't want to stay in New York. They wanted to leave New York and just come up here to my house so um, to forget what happened so they can get a little bit of a breather. And then I'm taking them back on Wednesday because I have to be at work Thursday. I'm taking them back Wednesday morning. And anyway, the reason for the title is... Um, remember I told you that I know a few true prophets of God? No, not the fakes on YouTube that I exposed or out in the world, not not those fakes, those are total frauds. Um, I mean a real prophet of God. And one of those prophets is I gave you the name of, I'm not, again, I'm not giving her last name, and I hope she's watching this message, because I really, this is addressed towards her and towards individuals that have the gift of prophecy. And um, again, not false prophets who have a laundry list of failed prophecies, of false prophecies. This doesn't apply to you. You are of Satan. This applies to the true prophets of God that have nothing but a perfect record of true prophecies coming to pass. So, with that being said, this young lady is named Viola, and I'm not giving out her last name. And Viola, if you're watching, please listen very carefully. Okay? Um, I told Viola that how <clears throat> not only I, but a few others believe she has the gift of prophecy. And I believe she suspected it herself, but she just didn't identify herself as a prophet of the Lord, Jesus Christ. But I believe she's a real prophet. Okay, this is what I believe. Now, I'm going to make something very clear. Just as a true prophet... I'm going to make something clear. Satan can tempt anyone. A true prophet of God can become a false prophet just by simply giving into the temptation of any kind of sin. So, I'll give you an example. If God gives a message to a true prophet to testify about, let's say, a warning, and the prophet adds to it, they're perverting the message. Therefore, the message will be false because there's truths and, and uh, <clears throat> deception mixed in it. When a true prophet delivers a message of God, it has to be exactly what the Lord Jesus says, like the true righteous prophets of old did. Okay? Cannot add to or take away. And it cannot be something. It's got to be whatever God says. Because these false prophets out here like to deliver stuff to you, those that listen to these people, that tickle your ears. It's always good stuff. They promise you a false peace. They promise you a false hope. They say you're going to get in heaven when you have, they have no business saying that. Because the only one that decides if you make it to heaven or not is Jesus Christ alone. So, um, make a long story short. I told this young lady I suspected that she was a prophet of the Lord. And other people have noticed it as well. Not just me. Okay? Um, when I told her that, she said, she told her sister this and then her sister like the claws came out and and I'm not making fun of anybody or calling anybody a name you know kind of like what happens on YouTube when a watchman's on the wall and they're speaking truth all these demons start going after them all these their, their claws come out these false prophet demons and their minions start attacking them profusely 
It happened to her. Now, I explained to her that when there's a prophet in the midst, according to the word of God, they don't have any honor in their country or in their own house. So that means not only will their countrymen attack them, but also their own family. And this is proof of that because her own sister attacked her and her father told her, oh, to listen to your sister. And, and was, her sister was saying, accusing her because she said a profane word. Now, before you all start pointing fingers, anyone without a stone, anyone without sin, cast your first stone. Because the reason why I'm saying this is because many of you have struggles. Many of you have lots of struggles, okay? And nobody has a right to point their finger at you when you are trying to get over your struggles and you've given it to God and you are actually repenting of your sins. They have no right to point fingers. You got so-called Christians that do that and they did it to her. She's struggling. I'm not saying profanity is right. I'm not saying that, okay? Most Christians struggle with that. Most Christians struggle with anger. So I'm not saying it's right. But if you fall on your face, God is fair and just to forgive you if you confess your sins and you ask God sincerely for help. Now, she's a prophet of the Lord. If I was her father and her sister, I would be very careful what words you use next because you already cursed this girl. When you what you do unto the to the Lord Oh, I'm sorry, what you do unto his prophets, you do unto him. You curse this girl. And, and that's not smart. Because if you, what, what the Bible says, you will receive a prophet's reward accordingly. And I'm going to show you that right now. And her father and brother are watching. I mean, her sister, I rebuke you in Jesus' name. Because that girl is a true prophet of the Lord. And you need to stop. You need to stop. I prayed about this. And I was told by the father to warn you. That girl is a prophet of God. A genuine prophet of God. And instead of envying her, you need to support her. need to support her. Viola, if you're watching, I apologize, but I have to be a watchman. I was told to speak on this. I have to be a watchman. I was told to speak on this. She's such a humble young woman. Really, she's, she's a humble young woman. In Matthew chapter 10, verse 41, says, He that receiveth the prophet in the name of a prophet shall receive a prophet's reward. And he that shall receive a righteous man in the name of a righteous man shall receive a righteous man's reward. Okay. And look, God also says a prophet's not honored in his house. And I understand what the Lord is saying. There's one prophet in the midst. These people get all jealous like a pack of Demon, demonic wolves. Instead of getting jealous of the girl, be thankful that there's a direct link. You know, and also to those that are actual prophets, don't think that you got any special treatment from God because you don't. God shows part, no partiality to anyone, and that's in the scriptures. So if you take the glory that goes to God and you give it to yourself, glory from man, okay? God will strike you down. That means he'll cut you off. If God gives you a message and you decide to add your own stuff, that's falsifying the message. So a true prophet, they give into temptation of sin, can be made a false prophet like that easily. That's why you have to be careful because Satan can still tempt you. I'm going to show you guys another scripture. This needed to be spoken on. All right. Mark chapter 6, verse 4. 
Jesus said, Oh, but Jesus said unto, unto them, A prophet is not without honor, but in his own country, and among his own kin, and in his own house. Kin means family. Kin means family. So when she told her father and sister that she was a prophet of the Lord, they attacked her. And, and they, they don't need to blame her for me making this video. They want to blame someone, they could blame me. Blame me. They attacked her. She didn't get honor in her house. That's exactly what happened. That's how you could tell another way that there's a prophet in your midst. And like I said, how to detect a false prophet? Deuteronomy chapter 18, verse 22. If their prophecy, if they prophesy something, it doesn't come to pass. That's a false prophet. God never sent them. Like these fakes on YouTube, and I'm going to come right out and say it. You notice how these false prophets on YouTube get a lot of honor and praise that's false from their cult followers? You notice that. But when there's a true prophet in the midst, they don't get honored. They get hated and falsely attacked. Like Viola. Like what happened to Viola. Exactly like what happened to Viola. Viola, if you're watching this, okay, I'm here to tell you, sister, please be strong. Don't worry because Jesus is with you. Jesus is with you. Not just for you. People like you. People like you. True prophets of God, or if you're a true watchman, or if you're a, a psalmist or a scribe, God is with you. Because the same goes for you. A true watchman is hated. They don't get honor in their country or in their own house. A true psalmist or a preacher, a teacher, they don't get honor in their own house. They get hate. But one day this country here is going to be starving worldwide for a revelation from a prophet or prophetess. And they're not going to get it. It's told, it's foretold in the scriptures. The land's going to be spiritually starved worldwide. Viola, I thought I'd take a minute to make this message for you. Please stay strong. Okay? Stay strong. And I'm going to message you right now. And may God bless you. Keep being a watchman for God because you are a true prophet of the Lord. And I'm not giving your name out. In these last days, true prophets and prophetesses are needed. And we don't have any. There's only a few. And you certainly... It's very hard to find them on YouTube. Most of them are fake. Okay? Most of them are fake. God bless you, saints. Please test the spirits. And I'm not giving out her last name. I'm going to respect this young woman's privacy.